Today I test a whole bunch of mods to find out exactly what's been lagging out my world and I guarantee the results aren't what you expect. I also capture a new villager, build a redstone farm and make drastic changes to my factories to improve performance. Let's create. Lag. I'm getting a whole lot of it over here and considering I'm running on a server so my PC has absolutely nothing to do with the processes of what's going on, I'm just getting such bad frames per second, it's unbelievable. And to try and deal with this, I have fully updated my pack and it's now available through CurseForge as a download, so you can download it. And I've added a whole bunch more create add-ons as well as a whole bunch of performance mods. And I've spent this Christmas period basically checking out all of the different performance mods that I could get my hands on and trying to figure out which ones work best for me but the problem is even with all of these performance mods i'm still barely getting 60 frames per second in this area and it's very very jittery and i'm not sure why now it could be that that's because i've got 110 mods loaded on this mod pack but i've got a pretty powerful pc and if i come to this world which has got absolutely nothing in it at all you can see i get nearly a thousand frames a second and sometimes even more than that so the number of mods aren't the problem what probably is the problem is the fact that i'm using using a crazy number of those mods to quite a high level in such a relatively small area. We've got a ridiculous amount of create stuff going on, powering all of my factories, including shafts and gearboxes and speed controllers and things like that. And I'm also using a ridiculous amount of frame blocks in order to get things like snow looking nice and my roads and my paths and my piles of things. So it could be that. And I'm also using a crazy amount of storage drawers, not just in here, but throughout the whole of this area. Down in the basement area you can see all of these storage drawer trims which are connecting all of the different buildings to all of the different storage systems like this one and this one and all of those systems come upstairs into all of the different buildings so everything can connect to them so it could be that so I want to find out. And the way I'm going to do that is by not getting run over by this van. Oh, jeez. So the first thing to do is take a download of this world. Open it up in single player so I can see what's going on. Jeez, and it's very laggy in single player. In fact, if we look at these graphs here, the one on the right is the ticks per second. That's how many things are having to be processed by the server. And on the left is my frames per second. And the lower the graph on the left, the better. So the first thing I'm going to do is disable frame blocks. So I've took a copy of the world. I've disabled the frame blocks mod and as you can see the world looks kind of weird without that but it hasn't really particularly increased my frames per second all that much i mean it's a minor improvement but it's not the frames per second boost i was looking for and this time the frame blocks are back but the storage drawers have all gone we come through here all of my storage drawers have disappeared and that hasn't given me any improvement on here at all in fact it feels worse if anything which is kind of weird so that just leaves the create mod which i have now removed and as you can see my frames per second have massively increased we're up to 500 ish but all of the stuff is gone oh jeez hmm it kind of looks a little bit empty without all that but boy does it feel a lot smoother jeez and the final test is to remove all of the create add-ons apart from create so now we've still got all of the create stuff going on but i've got no trains i've got no little vehicles running around or anything like that i've just got a whole bunch of belts and conveyors and things like that going on and you can see my frames per second haven't improved at all so yeah, it's the create mod. Oh, jeez. That's what this whole Let's Plays build around. Oh, no. So back on the actual server then, what can I do? Well, I've tried actually disconnecting the power and actually just turning things off. And to be honest with you, that doesn't really make a great deal of difference. If we come into my power station and flick that lever, then everything in the town should no longer be processing anything. But you'll see my frames per second haven't improved at all. And that's because just having all of these shafts and belts and pipes and gearboxes and things is just laggy because the majority of these things are just entities whether they're animated or not they're still entities but what's the worst back on this little world here with this platform i'm gonna start placing down a whole bunch of create things and see what causes the most lag so if i find myself a little chunk border here's one here and fill uh, chunks worth of shafts in and it does seem like shafts on their own really don't make a great deal of difference let's try gearboxes no they're fine as well case chain drives no they seem okay what about cogwheels and they're all right as well now fluid pipes took a minute to load into the world but they seem to be okay and replacing all of those with fluid tanks is taking a minute but there they are oh that has significantly dropped my frames per second down by half if i look this way a thousand if i look that way 500 yeah tanks are not good it turns out 
What if we colour them all in? Oh, geez, there's a lot of lag just doing that. No, that doesn't seem to have helped at all. So tanks are bad. Going back to the shafts then, adding cogs on the end of all those shafts really doesn't make much difference. But then if I power all of those, no, again, really, there isn't much difference. Adding belts to all of those shafts has significantly brought down my frames per second as well. So basically, tanks and belts are bad, regardless of whether they're powered or not. That's enough testing for now there. I'll come back to this later in the video and do even more of the create blocks. So when we do move on to the next area, I will know to avoid belts and tanks as much as possible. And that's not going to be a big problem. Because while we do use tanks like this to store liquids, we don't actually need to. Because like in the last episode, we made this infinite lava supply. And that's going to be far less laggy than a whole bunch of tanks. And similarly, instead of using belts to transfer all my items around, like I have done in this factory, we now know that big areas of interconnected storage drawers allow you to transfer transfer items round over relatively long distances without any lag. But that's probably enough talking about lag for one episode, it's about time I actually got involved in what we're doing. And what I'm doing is going to sleep and then crying into my backpack because I've used every single piece of redstone that I own. And I need redstone. Unfortunately for me, we can actually make redstone using potions of strength and cinder flower. And potions of strength are just blaze powder and awkward potion. And from all the work we did in the last couple of episodes, we are absolutely swimming in cinder flower. Nearly 100,000 of it. And in terms of blaze powder, well, I've got a reasonable amount of that. I've got 724 blaze rods in my backpack. And those come all the way back from our starter area over here at Hill Valley in our blaze spawner farm thing. And even though there's a triple blaze spawner in here and we've got a deployer that's hitting them with a the diamond sword to get all of the drops, it's not got any looting on it. And of course, I've got an AFK over here to actually make it work. So I think this is our best bet. I just need to get those swords enchanted. But there's a problem with that as well. You see, over in this storage building where all of my villagers live upstairs, I've got a whole bunch of librarians, but not a single one of them sell any looting. They do, however, sell on breaking, and I've got one for mending as well, which gives me an idea. So back in my test world, I have come up with this little system here, which apparently pushes blazes. Oh, jeez. So back in my little test world, I've come up with this little experiment. We've got a command block that apparently allows blazes to just pop. Oh, jeez. So back in my test world, I've come up with this little contraption, which is basically summoning in blazes. We've got the deployer with the diamond sword, which is getting it, and the experience nuggets that you get from when the blazes die going into this disenchanter here. When that gets up to a full bucket's worth, I'm hoping that that will then be pushed through this fluid pipe here and into the deployer, fixing the sword. But I don't know if that's actually how these things work. And it's taken a very long time to get a lot of experience. So in order to speed things up a bit, I'm going to make myself a very laggy tank, connect that to our little system here, grab a barrel and a funnel and stick in heaps of experience in there. And that should fill that up a whole bunch quicker. It is doing and that's giving us a whole bunch of experience and hopefully that's going to push it down this pipe i need to probably get rid of that one there and that one there and i was hoping that would push it up here but i guess it's not going to because it's got nowhere to go there we go is it going to just pour experience out it is but will the deployer actually pick it up is it going to fix the sword and i don't think it will oh geez and now my blazer's fallen off again your blazer yeah my blazer now it's definitely pouring experience all over the place but it doesn't actually look like it's fixing the sword and the sword does have mending on it so i guess that's not going to work for us that said can i click on the deployer with a heap of experience and give it some experience to fix the sword? And the answer is no. In that case then, is it possible to use something like this with a spout in order to mend things on a belt? If I put in a mending sword in, no, it just goes straight through. What about on a depot? Lots of damage on that. Is it? There it is. It did. It mended it. So we can mend the swords using the experience we're getting using a spout. So that means we need to take swords out of there which are damaged, put them onto a depot, squirt them a bit, and then put the swords back in there that are... Oh my goodness, what that's going to be a contraption. Well, I think I've created something that might just work. It's a big old mess, but here we go. We've got our deployer, which is killing the blazes. On that, it's got a filter that says it's only allowed fully mended diamond swords with the mended enchantment on it. There's also a funnel going into there with the same filter. Coming out of there, there's a filter that says that fully mended diamond swords are not allowed out. But everything else, like the experience of blaze rods and broken ones are. They'll go across this disenchanter onto this depot. If it's to blaze rod like that, it will get put in 
there, but if it's a broken diamond sword, it should get fixed and this arm should put it back in there. But for some reason, it just doesn't seem to be wanting to do that. Now, if I gave that a different type of diamond sword, no, that's not going to pop out either. Oh, how strange. So if I give it a cogwheel instead of that diamond sword, they'll come out and the arm will put them in there. But for whatever reason, it's totally ignoring the durability of the diamond sword. And that's interesting because if we look at the filter, it says only items match if their durability, enchantments and other attributes match as well. And that's exactly what I've done. So that diamond sword should be popping out of there, but it isn't. The filter's totally ignoring the data thing. So what's going on? And why isn't that mending now? It's unenchanted. Oh, it's take the disenchanters disenchanted it. Oh, geez, this isn't going to work then, is it? And now if I put that in there, it should spit out of here. No, the blaze rods are, but that's not. Okay, we'll allow a slightly broken one in there instead. Respect data, allow broken sword through there, put sword back in again, and it came out. Good, okay. I'm not going to put that there, and then that's going to steal it again. No, they just totally ignore the filters. Oh, well, this was a waste of time. There's probably a way of doing it that I'm not figuring out, but I think realistically, if we've got them breaking and looting on the swords, it should last a long enough time to get us plenty of blaze rods. Which means back on the server, I need a new villager that's going to be able to give us loot in. So I better go on the steel. And where I get my villagers from is not too far away. It's been a while since I've been there, but flying over these woods and looking into the distance, there is a village on the horizon. And all I've got to do is steal a villager and there's normally a whole bunch of them in this little pen here. There, there are millions. Hello, who do I like the sound of? Who have we got? Uh, Hortensia, Migdalia, the, the Lauren. No, you'll do. Come on. Oh, what have you, you've connected to? No, oh, geez, don't connect to the barrels. You're going to be a village. Are you going to be a, a librarian? Just wait there. Don't go anywhere. I said wait there. Down. Why have you come downstairs, you moron? That's not your workstation. And you can go in there. Excellent. And you can be a librarian, please. You shouldn't be able to connect to anything else. You've been blocked off. Right, fine. I'll go and break that workstation. Jeez, Lauren, you're annoying. There we go. Now you're a librarian. Fantastic. Blame. Nothing. Nothing. Fire aspect one. Punch two. Hellfire. Flame. Bookshelf. Curse of vanishing. Mending. Knockback one. Charmless four. Nothing. Bones two. Power four. Nothing. Loyalty one. Hey! I need those. Thank you very much. And I'll take a couple of them. Lovely. Right. Good. Now that we've got a looting villager, I'm also going to buy some unbreaking books. Let's go grab those swords. Here we go. We've got three swords. Looting. <laughs> Unbreaking. I've, I bought stasis again instead of unbreaking. Oh, I did this last time. I'm such a moron. You have that one. Get me many, many more drops. Plus, bruh, sell me the correct book this time. If I buy it, it changes to stasis. That's so weird. Don't be weird, weirdo. I just want to sell you stasis. Well, I don't want stasis, mate. Here we go. Back over at the Blaze Farm, we now have three looting three, unbreaking three swords, and that should mean we're getting a whole bunch more blaze rods than we did before. Before I sit here and wait, though, I want to see how many we've got to start with so I can see how many we actually end up getting and we've got 64 if you're enjoying this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button well this has been running for an hour now and it's barely used any durability on the sword if i take that out we can see it's still got over a thousand durability and i thought that might be because it switched to another one but there were only three in here and there's still two left but how many blaze rods have we got that's what i want to find out and they should all be making their way under the ground across this area all the way into our storage system over 1500 in an hour that's not bad i'll take it so now we've got nearly 2300 blaze rods that should get us quite a lot of redstone now back over at my snowy area there are a couple of other ways to get redstone as well one way is to wash crushed raw iron which you can actually get from crushing crimson although you only get a 40 percent chance of it and crimson can't be produced it's just one of those things that appears in the world which means in order to get crushed raw iron i'd have to go mining and if i go mining i might as well go mining for redstone so it's pretty pointless so that leaves us with potions of strength which means we need to crush this blaze powder by using some crushed wheels. But where are we going to build this new redstone farm? Well, peeps, as you know, if you've been watching this series over in this building here, I made a whole building just for making biodiesel. And that was to use the diesel generators add-on for create, which turned out was a load of rubbish. And because of that, we've got all of this stuff in here, completely surplus to requirements, as well as all of this stuff upstairs, which is just totally useless now. So I've got loads of space in here. I could just tear all this out and use it. That said, since updating my pack, 
there's a whole bunch more diesel stuff. There are huge diesel generators, which you can all connect together and create even more power. There's also crude oil, actual diesel, gasoline, turbochargers, and you can even find oil in the world and pump it out with pump jacks. But my biggest issue with the diesel generators wasn't so much the power output that they produce, although that has been doubled in this latest version. It was the fact that you couldn't change how long a bucket of biodiesel would last in them for, and well, realistically, they last three minutes, and to produce it's very difficult, and I just didn't think that was right. Considering lava buckets are actually really easy to get hold of, and to, they will power a blaze burner for a thousand seconds, which is like 16 and a half minutes. So realistically for me, I think biodiesel should last in a diesel generator for the same amount of time, but you couldn't change it in the config before. However, since this update, you can now change the burn rate of the fuel in order to make it last longer. So maybe diesel generators aren't so bad after all. And in that case, I probably should leave all of this stuff in case we ever want to use it again, which means the actual area that we've got to produce our new stuff isn't quite as big as I thought. Although I'm pretty sure I could squeeze it all into this area here. So let's start with crushing the blaze rods into blaze powder. And the way I would normally do that is with a little system like this. The blaze rods would be in there to get crushed through these crush wheels and go into that barrel. But because we've learned that belts are no good for us, I'd kind of like to do this without using belts. And I wonder, is it possible to run these across item drains? And here we go, a little setup that's using three item drains instead of a belt, but will it work? Let's grab a bra blaze rod, stick it in there and see... No, it just went straight through. Oh, man. Okay, don't worry, guys, I've got a plan. What if we got a depot there and put the crushing wheels on like that? Let's take my blaze rod, stick it out of there and put it on there, and uh, absolutely nothing happens. Oh, man. And there we go, we now have a beltless crushing system. If I put the stack of blaze rods up there, they're going to come through here, they're going to get crushed, and they're going to end up in here. There we go, 58 of them already. Wow, that was fast. In which case, we should stick a whole bunch of those in there and see how we get on. Next, we need to make awkward potion. That needs nether wart, a blaze burner, and water. And what I'm going to do is exactly like what we did in the building over there, and that is to take the nether wart from there and deposit it in there with a mechanical arm. Oh, jeez, I filled that two barrels of these build up. Oh, jeez. Hang on a minute. Use another mechanical arm to take fuel off this depot and put it in there. And connecting all that together, that should start making awkward potion, which it looks like it is. We'll then stick a smart pipe on there with an awkward potion filter. Stick a pump on there and have that go into another basin. And that needs another mixer on top. And that should then filter awkward potion into there. It is doing good. And uh, now that all of our blaze powder is finished, we can take a barrel of that and stick that on there. Stick a depot in front of it with a funnel sticking out to put it on there. Another mechanical arm to take that out of there and put it in there. And one more mechanical arm to take even more fuel <laughs> out of there and put it in there. And this is getting a little bit in the way of my stairs now, which is not ideal. But then this is only going to be running when we actually need it to run. It's not going to be one of these farms that just runs constantly because there's no need for it to because I have to AFK for the blaze powder. But it would be nice to set this up in a slightly better format so that I don't have to deal with all of this mess. Speaking of mess, here's a whole bunch of mess. There we go. That looks a lot better than it did. And now we should be generating potions of strength. We are. Oh, fantastic. So now all I need to do is take that potion of strength and some cinder flour, put it on a depot with a spout, and it'll turn into redstone. And I'm sure I can find enough room in here to do that. Although I kind of wish I built this the other way around now because it's all a bit in the way. Oh, geez. Hmm. Give me a minute. Well, that might look a little bit more of a mess, but believe me, it's a much more compact system going on for making the awkward potion and the potion of strength. If I can get around it to show you, We've got our depots there, the mechanical arms in front, all of the pipe work in front of that. We're connecting it all like this, and it's all working. And where's the crushing wheels? Well, uh, I'll stick them back in in a minute once I've tidied all this up. So then we just need a smart pipe coming out of there. Depot there, barrel for cinder flour, funnel onto there. That'll put the cinder flour on there. That's going to turn it into redstone, and then we just need to take it out and put it somewhere. I mean, I'm going to use a belt, but it's only a little one. Barrel on that end with cinder flour in. The cinder flour is going to come there, it's going to get squirted by that then the redstone can go straight into that barrel then nice you said you're not going to use belts yeah but sometimes it's better one of them there one of them there that's that belt going in the right direction we just need that pump powered now pump power 
power, power, power. That's the pump powered. Yes, we're getting potion of strength in there. So I just need to go and grab a whole ton of cinder flour. And you need to put the crushing wheels back. Yes, I don't need to put the crushing wheels back. Jeez. Okay, here we go. One barrels worth of cinder flour there. There we go. And it's getting turned into redstone. Now it is only one at a time. It's going to take a long time to do it. But we've effectively got a whole barrels worth of redstone there. That's amazing. All right, now I can put those crushing wheels back in. I guess we can stick them down here a little bit out of the way in front of this window. And there we go, our little crushing setup is set back up again. Have all of those as well, mate. I don't think I need them for anything else. I bet you need them for something else, probably will do. So how are we doing over here? We've still got three barrels full of blaze powder there. We've still got nearly a barrels full that's actually being pulled from. We've still got nearly a barrels full of nether wart that's being pulled from. And we've got potions of strength for days. And we're already nearly two stacks of redstone in. So while this redstone continues to pile up, I'm going to go back to my test world and find out what else from Create is laggy. Well, what about item vaults? Well, they don't appear to be too laggy at all, really. And what about shoots? Oof. Yeah, shoots are laggy too. So, so far we've got belts, tanks and shoots. What else? What about item drains? Yeah, they're just as bad as shoots, if not worse. Oh, jeez. And the site casing, however, is perfectly fine. Oh, jeez, depots are bad too. Oh, why are depots? Depots seem to be worse than the rest oh my goodness what about smart shoots smart shoots are bad and kind see they are just normal minecraft hoppers and they're perfectly fine yeah for some reason shoots which pretty much do exactly the same thing are awful hoppers instead of shoots then in case fans are absolutely fine so are in case chain drives blaze burners are fine what about ones with blazes in whoa 43 frames per second for blaze burners with actual blazes in the mechanic alarms are bad too even worse than the others i'd say not as bad as blaze burners though oh my goodness mechanical crafters are as bad as blaze burners what okay you need to we need a new ultra bad pile here yeah mechanical drills are okay they're better than belts but they're still kind of bad and they can go with a not too bad pile mechanical saws are bad mechanical mixers are pretty bad as well and they're pretty much in line with mechanical presses also pretty bad mechanical bearings pretty bad and windmill bearings are pretty bad oof mechanical harvesters are by far are the worst mechanical pistons on the other hand are not too bad at all and mechanical plows are nowhere near as bad either mechanical pumps are a lot worse than pipes and mechanical rollers are even worse than harvesters how can that be oh jeez. Oh, and with all that gone but just this lot over here my frames are still nowhere near where they were so what have we learned from all this these things are pretty bad those things are slightly worse these are even worse and those things things will just completely lag out your game and that means that realistically out of all of these items there really isn't a best way to transport things around or deal with them the conclusion is just everything in smaller quantities i guess so knowing what we know now about these tests i want to do a couple more first i want to check storage drawers which do seem to have quite a significant impact probably about the same as belts and item drains to be honest with you the spruce trim is absolutely fine so having a whole bunch of the storage drawers connected with trim is isn't going to cause any problems at all okay draw controllers cause a bit of a problem they might not affect the frames per second particularly much but they do affect the actual ticks per second of the game that graph on the bottom right should be scrolling through smoothly but it's not it's got big old spikes of lag because it's trying to process all of these controllers being connected to each other that said though replacing those out with draw controller slaves is absolutely fine so as long as you don't have loads of actual draw controllers you aren't going to have a problem and just going back to those spruce drawers for a second, they are causing a bit of frames per second lag, but they're not causing any issues for the world at all. The last test then is frame blocks. I put a whole bunch of just frame block cubes there and that's not a problem at all. And the same thing can be said for frame slopes as well. So yeah, frame blocks, really not a problem and I thought they were. So knowing what I now know, how easy is it going to be for me to take this world, which is getting 40 frames per second roughly in this area, and get it to a reasonably smooth 60? And I think I'm going to start in this building here, which I've already rebuilt the internals of four times over the course of this Let's Play. But I'm going to try and take out as many of the belts and unnecessary shoots and things like that as possible. Replace it all with spruce storage drawers and trim. And see if I can 
down and help me the FPS a little bit. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? Why am I doing this again? In fact, you know what? I'm not going to start with this. I'm going to go to the basement and I'm going to start with these lag making machines. These are my cobblestone generators. There are a whole lot of belts in here. There are a whole lot of chutes in here. There's a whole lot of everything in here. Oh, and I didn't test funnels. I should really test funnels. Okay, so a chunks with the Vandersite funnels is pretty laggy. Probably about the same as belts, if not slightly worse. And brass funnels are pretty much exactly the same. Ooh. And apparently you can't place tunnels on top of all of the tunnels, and these ones are somehow halfway through a... What? How, what? I don't know. But yeah, uh, mm, I'm sure tunnels will be fine. So back in the world again, I guess the first thing I should do is disconnect the power from these cobblestone generators to stop them generating cobblestone, and then just destroy absolutely everything. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. I've replaced all of the chutes underneath these with hoppers, and at the front two hoppers, I've got a couple of draw controller slaves, which are all connected together with spruce trims all the way down there so then all i have to do is get that out of there and send it that way which will be a whole lot less belts however i could even just do that like this and bring it all the way down here with the spruce trim saving myself even more belt now this is costing me an awful lot of wood because spruce trim is sticks and wood but i've got tons of wood because i've got a wood farm so it's all good so now i've got that working on that side i need to get it working on that side so i guess there's the moment of truth let's turn it back on i mean i don't want to jinx anything but it's already feeling a lot smoother to play but well, let's find out what happens when i actually turn it on here we go we're making cobble and it's going into the system the hoppers are starting to back up which means they're not transferring the items fast enough out of there which is fixable if i add in even more of these draw controller slaves and i think i've done it all of the systems now have a full row of draw controller slaves on all of the hoppers are pointing into those i've put torches down to stop the lighting updates it feels a little bit smoother but still a little bit framey when the cobble generates but the good news is now none of these hoppers are backing up they're all going through into the system and they're all getting taken out at that end so that's much better and would you look at that 147 frames per second that's an improvement and those little green lines at the bottom are nice and tightly at the bottom which is good and the reason for this isn't just because i got rid of the cobblestone generator you'll actually see if we go over to the factory i have completely torn out everything from each factory and completely rebuilt it using just storage drawers to interface everything and it means i've got a whole bunch more space now that i didn't have before in fact it's absolutely absolutely crazy how much I can squeeze everything in just using this system and if we hop downstairs underground there's a lot less power lines going on everything's a lot more optimized down here and all of the storage drawers that hold the items are just down here where the items get sent off to the trains and yes we've still got a few belts and things going on down here that's a little bit unavoidable really but overall things are running a lot smoother than they were I'm hardly getting any lag spikes at all everything's nice and neat and my factories are much easier to get around now because there's hardly anything in them so all in all that's a massive improvement the only downside is the factories don't look anywhere near as interesting as they did before there's way too much empty space and these poor little monkeys that are driving around are driving around completely pointlessly and that makes me a little bit sad but I've learned a lesson today. I've learned a very big lesson, and that is that creating a town like this that's absolutely rammed to the hilt with create contraptions and belts and tanks and all of that sort of stuff going on is probably not the best way to play with a mod pack like this. I think having things spread out further apart and minimizing the sort of contraptions that you've got in close confinement can really make a big difference to your game. And when we move away from this area, which we are doing very, very soon, I'm going to make sure that I'm a little bit smarter with how I plan everything out. But for now, it's time for me to go. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.